Uh, good day everyone. So there's a brief introduction to my project. So the project is only based on the 190E. So that's the W201 chassis. That's by the Mercedes-Benz Ranger. This is their first uh, compact uh, luxury vehicle. You know? So in the line of uh, W202, W203, you know, the C-Class uh, section of the Mercedes-Benz. So what we have here is uh, just the rolling chassis, the body, without any transmission, engine, you know, the drivetrain is not in this chassis right here at my at the background. So uh, I've had this for a while, contemplating on which uh, drivetrain to use. You know, I had uh, I had previously put the compressor engine in the W124 uh, chassis. That's the C124. That's the PK. So, but I uh, wanting something a little bit more nimble, a little bit more uh, 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 smaller. You know. So that's why I opted for this chassis. Part of the course, you know, this is a old car. Uh, requires some uh, maintenance to be done, some rust repairs, and uh, you know, upgrades and the chassis uh, for the brakes and things like that. So the engine of choice uh, is the V8, the M113 5.0 liter V8, taken out of a uh, was taken out of a W220. The W220 that's the S class, the S500. The reason I chose the V8 is because I haven't played with the compressor engine previously. I decided to go for a naturally aspirated engine to see how it goes so that I won't have to be playing with tubings, you know, intercooler piping, and things like that. I already had a plan to use uh, the uh, that's the supercharger out of a body. That's the TVS 1320. But I scrapped that idea in favor of uh, any. So it's a V8 uh, from factory. It had uh, 302 horsepower and 416 newton meter of torque. So that should move the, this small 190 chassis quite well. So I'm expecting uh, 0 to 60 in. Uh, in the I five uh, seconds, so 5.6, 5.7. I'm expecting a sub six second zero to 60. So that's that. So the chassis to make to fit this engine in this chassis, there will be need for some modifications. So, chief of that is the steering. The steering is in the way of the exhaust manifolds for this engine, so that will have to be taken care of. And the method to do that is to shift the steering box by 5 cm lower in the chassis. So I've seen that done by someone in Russia, so that shouldn't be a problem. So the second major one will be the engine arms. As you can see in the background here. So these engine arms are what came with the S500, but they will not fit, they will not locate the engine properly into this chassis. So, what we are going to do is, <laughs> what we are going to do is uh, make some uh, new engine arms, and I'll be making use of the uh, engine seats from uh, the S500 so that it can cope with the weight of the engine. So that's that about that. Plans are on the way for that, and then the next upgrade will be the brake upgrade. Now for the brake upgrade, fortunately, the S500 W220 front brakes, the caliper for that uh, chassis is, uh, I think it's a dual piston caliper, if I'm not sure, is it a dual piston or four piston caliper, so that caliper bolts on to the 190D spindles, so that's a very very good uh, upgrade and then the discs that will work with that can come out of a W203 that's the, the sports version or the, the later sports versions or if I'm able to get to the C32 discs and uh, I've been uh, in my internet search I've also discovered that 
it is possible to use the W163, that's the ML430 front discs. So I think it should be around 334 millimeters. That should be the, the, the diameter of the disc. So I'm hoping that should provide adequate braking power for the major one of the major decisions to be made, you know, apart from the drive train, I already chose uh, the V8 and uh, for the transmission I'm going to be using the uh, 716 manual, the 6-speed manual transmission. That's what I'll be using. I thought of using the auto but too much, uh, I I've gone down that route before. So except you get the commercially available controller for the 722.6, that's the auto transmission. Uh, except you do that, don't even bother with it. So, so the next uh, major thing to decide on will be the ECU. So for the ECU, I've narrowed it down to four options. When I say four, uh, I mean the options I have considered. You know, apart from the big names like the ECU Master and things like that, I will be I will be looking towards that side because of the cost. So I've decided that uh, maybe is it I use the MS3? That's the Mega Squirt. If I get the daughter board, I can always make uh, uh, a, a motherboard for it myself. That shouldn't be too hard to do. I've been uh, dabbled into electronics in the past, so and even in the present, which is when I say the past, I mean I'm still actively uh, doing electronics projects. So then the next one will be the Rossi, the Rossi FI. So I love, I love that project. It's an open source ECU project. But the problem I have with that project is that the hardware. The, 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 the entry level into the hardware is just too expensive. So they have uh, a micro Rosefi that it can only do four cylinder. The injector channels can't handle dual injector per channel. So supposing I even wanted to use that one for uh, let's say uh, paired injection, injection so, or wasted spark. I wouldn't be able to do that because each channel can only take an injector. You can't put two injectors because I think the uh, the current capacity of each channel is about I'm not sure maybe two amps, one point something to two amps. So not enough. So or I go to the Proteus. The Proteus can do V12 engine, both uh, sequential, both uh, the uh, spark and uh, fueling but it's around $650 without even thinking of shipping yet and it doesn't have a white band or anything like that so um, so Rosefi I might still use it if I get uh, some funds some free funds to put towards that then also the LPC8 that's bowed up I've used the LPC8 from Bardo before and I quite enjoyed it. So I passed it on to my friend. So, but right now it's about 900 and something uh, dollars for the LPC8. And it's only the LPC8 that can do sequential heat. So, and it also has a white band, also has uh, the electronic throttle control. So I love it, but. It may be out of my budget for now. And then the last option is the Speeduino. Speeduino can do uh, sequential eight if you use uh, the Hello. STM32, or you can use uh, if you use the Art Mega 2560. You can only do uh, four channels of ignition, four channels of uh, fueling. So you have to decide. If you do that, you can only do uh, wasted spark and uh, semi sequential for a V8. So, and then the speed, you know, I don't know, people are kind of, it's kind of a missed bag with some people. I have used speed, you know, before I enjoyed it, so I don't know. So, is it that the cheaper options comes with the, is it that I use the Mega Squared 3 and I make a board for it myself, or I use speed, you know? That's the cheaper route. Then the next in line will be the Rosefi. 
and then the last option will be the LPC8 from Bowder. So when I decide which one to use, I'll update the channel. So right now, what I'm doing is preparing the engine and then making the mounts. When I'm done with that, I'm going to try to place the engine.